what you're about to witness is a situation that I guess you can say uh, it's a situation of the classic situation of fucking your own self and your own ass. Now when I say that it's one of them situations where you actually try to help somebody out but helping them out really didn't help you out because all you did is fuck yourself. And when I say that I'm talking about um, possibly doing a favor for somebody or saving them some money or, or doing more favors for them and saving them more money or possibly even putting money in their pocket so they can have money to spend while you do a fucking job for them and lose money. Now before we go and look at this situation, um, I'm going to go ahead and explain the situation to you. Uh, a guy wrecks his car, he brings it to my shop, he got an insurance check, the insurance company paid to replace the panel, he didn't want to replace the panel, he just wanted to fix the panel, which I did, and then I had to blend the paint into the other panel, but the situation is, is the panel that I fixed happened to be aluminum. Now, the car we're talking about is a Land Rover. Um, Land Rovers have been aluminum ever since I can remember, and we're talking all the way back to the 60s. They're aluminum body cars, um, they're made in the UK, and over here in America, they're actually a very expensive high-tech vehicle. Why? I don't know. Because if you ever get in one and drive it, it fucking drives like a fucking wagon. Um, but, uh, you know, you got these Land Rover guys that are just like all high-tech and shit, and they're all into them. So he brings his car over here. He had a $500 deductible, and he also got money to fix it, but they deducted the $500 out. So I saved him his deductible, and I went ahead and negotiated a price to do a quickie fix job on it because he just wanted to fix the rear quarter panel, the corner, which we're going to be looking at. He wanted to fix that so he can put another bumper on it um, other than the original bumper um, because that was like the second time that he ran into something or backed into something with his Land Rover and fucked it up. So he's going to put one of these high-tech, you know, combat issue fucking big giant metal bumpers on it so when he backs into something it's going to fuck that up instead of his car. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and fix that and I'll go ahead and paint it for this price, which was pennies on the fucking dollar. And then um, you'll get your car, I'll get my money, and we'll be down the road. I've been working on this fucking thing for a week and a half. It turned out to be a situation where, yeah, we should have replaced the panel and been down the road and had it done in about three and a half days instead of a week and a fucking half. Let's go look at this fucking thing because we're going to turn this into a DIY auto school video. Um, I have bitched and complained at the beginning. I want to apologize for that. But that's the way it fucking goes when you got a situation such as this. Well, that's the situation you got. You got a situation that says, you know what? I fucked myself in the ass and there's nothing I can do about it. Because that's the situation you have. You gotta buckle down, you gotta get that belt loop, you gotta tighten it up, you gotta squeeze your nutsack until your nutsack can't be squeezed no more and you gotta finish the job. Whether you like it or you don't, it's a situation that says hell yes. Or should it be hell no? Son of a bitch, I don't know. Because the situation just isn't there all the time for you to do. What you want to do, Sammy? So help me straight out of Miami. How y'all doing today? We're over here at SWRC's DIY Auto School. My friend Pete ain't in a good mood because he tried to do a job for somebody. He did a square deal and he feels like he got around. He got the round deal for doing a square deal. Now let me explain it to you. Let me tell you how it's going down because the square deal just started to tumble down the hill and, 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 and wrecked. It wrecked like a big freight train and, and it's not looking good. You see, that's what happens when you get your buddies involved in the situation of trying to run a business and you say, you know what? My cigar isn't lit anymore. Hell no, it's not, because I'm Sammy Sulami. Beautiful hat. I love my hat. It's such a beautiful, colorful hat. But this isn't about my hat. 
This is about a situation that says I helped my friend out and I fucked myself. He got an insurance check, I gave him the money, and I did the job cheap. Cheaply did the job, but I'm a professional guy, and I do professional work, and I'm not gonna screw the guy around because my name's on the job. Let's get back with my friend Pete and see what the hell's the phone's ringing. I gotta go Sammy Salami straight out of Miami teaching you all that y'all need to know about doing it right, doing it right. And my hat's still beautiful, son of a bitch. I wish I was in Miami where I belong, you cocksuckers, sons of bitches. <laughs> the bastard. <sighs> Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. <laughs> This is the vehicle in question. Now, you can basically see where I uh, painted the car, all right? We had to do this corner here. This is the corner that was wrecked right here. It was all crushed in. Um, it was basically crushed in to the point where crushing it in, we should have replaced it. But my friend Pete went ahead and straightened it out. Looks really, really nice. Came out really, really beautiful. And I busted my ass to make that look factory original. So we went ahead and fixed that, pulled it out, just like I said. And then I went ahead and painted it. I went ahead and put my paint on the vehicle. I blended the paint into the vehicle because the accident was down here. But this is a charcoal gray, see? This is a charcoal gray. And what I had to do is blend the paint into the existing paint. And then, of course, we have this body line right here. All right? So I had to blend the paint into this panel here. Now what happened is everything was going fine, dandy, until I put my clear coat on. When I put the clear coat on, that's when we have fucking problems. I went ahead and sprayed my first coat of clear and what happened is we got a reaction and we started getting tiger stripes. Okay, now this was not caused by the paint, all right? The paint did not cause this, but what happened since the temperature was a little bit cooler than normal yesterday. Once I sprayed the clear onto the panel, it released the agents of the paint and it started to drag the paint down. And that's what caused our problem that you're looking at right here. All right, you can see a light spot right here. You can see a dark spot right here. I'm trying to get it with the light. There you go. All right, and then there's a light spot right here. Okay, and then we also got a spot right in there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a round situation. And that's because if you look close, you can see that there is runs in the paint right here. All right, we got, we got runs in the paint. There it is right there, okay? And what happened is it drug the paint. It drug the paint down where I blended in because I blended it all the way over to here. And it took the paint and it drug it down. So it was darker and then when it stopped, um, dragging it, all right, it would turn back to the light color. And then, of course, we got one right here. You can see it. There it is right there. There's a big run right here, and it goes all the way over to here. So that's what the situation is, and that's what happened. <laughs> Thank you. 
situations here. We're looking at a situation where the streaks are in it, the tiger stripes, and we're also looking at uh, the runs that we have in it, which caused our tiger stripes, because the only place that the tiger striped is where the paint was blended into. Now, what actually caused this is I used the wrong hardener in the clear coat. And when I say that, we're talking about your clear coat that you use uh, requires an activator slash hardener. And it comes in three different variances. It comes in cold temperature, medium temperature, and hot temperature. Well, since it's pretty much hot down here in Texas all the time, the only hardener I had was the hot temperature, which actually dries slow. And when I applied that clear on there, even though I put a medium wet coat on it, which means that I went very quickly and fast, it dried at a slow uh, uh, temperature speed and then what it caused is it caused runs in it which took the paint and made the paint sag with it. Does that make sense? So that's what happened here and now the problem is, is we got to fix it. Now I got one coat of clear on it and I stopped immediately because when this happens here you don't want to put no more clear on it. You want to stop right there. But the problem is, is when this happens and you got to get your runs out, okay, when you get these drips or runs or sags, we'll call them. These are sags. These aren't really runs because it, it was, it's a long sag, all right? The only way to get those out is you've got to sand them out. Now, if I sand through the clear coat, then I will have a situation I'll have to go ahead and paint into this door because I will have to epoxy prime our quarter panel here because once you bust through the clear, wherever you bust through the clear, What's going to happen, it's going to blister around those edges when you go to paint it. Because I'll have to take some gray paint that we used on the car and I'll have to smoke that in to get rid of all these tiger stripes that were caused by the sagging of the clear coat which pulled the paint with it. And if I bust through the clear coat, what's going to happen, again, I'm going to tell you again, I'm repeating myself now, if I bust through the clear coat, anywhere that I bust through the clear coat, it's going to ripple peel and, and, and have a, a, a shitty effect because what happens is the reactor of the situation comes from the reducer hitting the clear coat which does not require any reducer so when you take the reducer and it hits that clear the, where you bust it through it'll peel off and it'll shrink it back. So if we look in this area right in here I don't know if you can see that on camera but once I sand it you'll be able to see it there's a big long sag of clear that goes from here all the way down to here. Now the way that we're going to fix that, you've seen me holding this for the last several minutes, this is a paint stick. We're going to take our paint stick and we're going to take some 1500, 1500 wet sandpaper. I'm going to put my paint stick right here because I want it to be as long as the, paper, as the uh, paint stick, as long as the paper. I'm going to go ahead and break that off, all right, just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll roll my paper around the stick. Because now we are going to go ahead and use this as a sanding block. And this is very important to get runs and sags out is to use a paint stick because of the hard surface that it is. Now if you want to make some custom job wood block, that's fine. Or if you got something else to use. But the real deal is, is it's got to be a hard surface block. You cannot use a soft block on that. Even if you have a hard rubber block, that will not work. Because what will happen is the rubber will push on that run and it will sand the run, but it's also sanding around the edges of the run as well. And when you do that, what's happening is you're sanding these edges right here more than you're sanding the run out. And by the time you get the run out, the edges of where your block was pushing on it you understand what I'm saying? Where it was pushing on it on the edges is going to burn through. And if you notice, we're right on the edge of this body line here and we don't want to burn through that paint. So what I have here is I have a five gallon bucket, just like you see. And then inside that bucket, we also have a nice clean sponge. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take my sandpaper with my stick. I'm going to dip it in the bucket, all right? Because this is taped off ready for paint, so we don't want to use a lot of water on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paint stick with my sandpaper and I'm just going to concentrate on the run itself. I'm not going to sand around it. I'm going to keep it right on the run and then we're going to look at it and see. 
Now, before I get this done, I want to show you the uh, run that we have here, the sag, because it goes all the way around down to here. Now, when you're sanding it, you're going to be able to feel the run. You'll be able to feel it from the vibration of sanding it. And you just want to sand it to where it's gone. No more. That's it. Taking my squeegee, I'm looking at it, and I see that the sag has gone down here, but it still has a sag under the clear coat, and it goes all the way down over to this, around this corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and wet my sandpaper. You notice I'm using minimal water here. That's another important step when doing this. You don't want to use a lot of water when you're getting rid of these type of runs. I'm using my finger, okay, if you notice, I'm using my finger as a guide to feel that edge. I don't want to sand that edge with this uh, sanding block because what will happen is I will burn through that paint and that's what we're trying to avoid. Now when you're using your wooden block here, your homemade wooden paint stick block, I was telling you how you can feel the vibration of the block sanding the rundown. When you can't feel that anymore, that pretty much is telling you the run is gone. I'm feeling right here, I feel just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit that one more time in this area. And we just want to be real careful not to burn through the paint because that is what's going to happen if we sand too much. We're going to burn through that clear and then we're going to be screwed. So now I see that I've removed our run and it's gone. Let's go up here, we'll get this one out right here. There's a, there's a sag right here that pulled our paint down. Let's go ahead and remove that the same way. Sometimes you can't see them, but they're there. So what you want to do is feel the vibration of your stick. You'll be able to feel it. You'll know that you're sanding it by the feel. Stay away from your edges as you're sanding it and be very cautious not to sand through the clear coat. Do not burn through the clear coat as you're sanding. Use minimal water and take your time. And now I don't feel any more vibration in my sanding block, so that's telling me that it should be gone. So the next thing you want to do after you get your sags out, and you don't have to get streaks in it. This is just basically if you are painting your car and you get a sag in it, okay, to remove the sags. Um, if you paint your first coat and you see that there's a sag in your clear coat, stop immediately. Let it dry overnight, come back and do what I'm doing. I'm going to take my soft block now, this is our rubber block, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly scuff this up. And the reason I'm going to scuff it up is to blend our sand job into the rest of it because if we don't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to have a discoloration, believe it or not, in our paint job. So I'm just going to go ahead and take our uh, sanding block just like so with our leftover sandpaper and I'm just going to do a nice light scuff job just to scuff it down and clean up the clear coat. I'm not using a lot of water. I'm basically semi dry sanding it with my 1500 because I don't want to use a lot of water on it. And I'm just very, barely, lightly sanding it. And now what I'll do is I'll take some nice clean white balls and I'm just going to wipe it down, get all the water off. Just like you see me doing here, white balls are the best thing to use for this. These are automotive paint and body white balls. These are not the white balls that you buy over at your local automotive parts supply store. These white balls are designed for paint and body. So if you use a white ball, get the white ball brand and make sure they look just like that right there. I'm going to go ahead and remove any water that might have dripped on our paper. We don't want that to blow into it. And then once we clean it up, and we let that dry for a few minutes, 
will be ready for repaint. So if you get some sags in your clear coat and you notice them, stop immediately. Do not keep spraying. Stop immediately. Wait overnight. Let it dry good. Use your paint stick, your 1500. You saw how quick those came out. This is ready to repaint. All right. I'm wiping it all down now. I'll be painting this thing in about 15, 20 minutes and it'll be a done deal. The other moral to this story is, and the other lesson, don't cut people deals unless you really want to cut deals and, and be the nice guy that you are. Because when you cut deals, this is what happens. This is a good classic situation of I'm going to help that guy out and I'm going to do a square deal for him and I'll make a little bit of money. And what happens is you end up losing your ass and uh, basically not making any money. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you and telling you how to do stuff. And hopefully you are learning by watching and listening to what's going on here. Deals are deals, wheels will spin, and getting fucked in the ass is basically your situation, not the other guys, because you are in control of what you do and what kind of deals you want to throw out there. We'll see you later. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.